So as I'm sure you've all seen by now, Nerd Roddick has been getting attacked online in a pretty disgusting way, and it's not just an attack on him, but rather an attack on all the quote-unquote YouTube movie critics and movie fans. And this attack has gone extremely viral, with accounts like Drama Alert even sharing it, but what makes this attack different to the usual ones that we see targeted towards people like Nerd Roddick is what's implied by the message. I mean, it's pretty obvious what they mean when they say, Nerd Roddick is a piece of that we've allowed to operate amongst us for far too long. I mean, I don't want to put words in his mouth there, but to say something like operate amongst us for far too long does imply something pretty disgusting, and this is truly just atrocious behavior. You're not slick. I'm onto you. But where this story actually gets darker is when you really question what causes someone to attack a YouTuber content creator in this way, and that's where you realize that it's actually the established Hollywood media that has ended up causing something like this to happen, as they are the ones that started this narrative of quote-unquote toxic fandom and online fandom being the enemy, with journalists constantly asking questions like this. I'm curious if that's comparable to this sort of world, this culture of toxic fandom, where like if you make a movie, especially if you make a superhero movie, it does, like you have great intentions, but there are always going to be a small yet vocal group of people there can kind of just be toxic. So Speaking of funny. Charmaine, I, I just have to ask because there are some of the, I'd say extreme Star Wars fans who have made this a conversation on the internet about how they don't want a female director. Mm. Which seems bizarre because episodes of The Mandalorian mm. were directed by females. I mean, Kathleen Kennedy mm -hmm. has been overseeing all of this. So, you know, what is your take? Along with them constantly calling us ists and phobes, when in reality people like Nerd Roddick will give a good review to something like House of the Dragon, which has a female lead. Or Critical Drinker will actively praise Korean cinema, which I'm sure he wouldn't do if he was really a bigot. One thing I've come to realise about the world of entertainment is that if Hollywood is no longer willing or able to give the audience what they want, well, there's plenty of other places that are, and one of those places just so happens to be South Korea. Whether it's producing classic action thrillers like Old Boy, compellingly dark comedies like Parasite, or gripping psychological thrillers like Squid Game, they just seem to keep churning out absolute bangers. But in reality, these people just want to see good stories, good movies, just like any other fan. But Hollywood media choosing to paint this ridiculous narrative results in some people taking it to an extreme and letting it occupy their entire lives until they finally lash out in this disgusting manner. So really the blame shouldn't end at the person attacking Nerd Roddick here, but rather the blame should end at the main source, which to me definitely seems like it has to be the Hollywood media. But where this gets What's even darker for me is when you think to yourself, surely Hollywood media knows that they have the potential to cause something like this happening, and surely they know that it only takes one person to buy into this narrative and possibly take things to an extreme that goes beyond just the internet. This is the potential risk of demonizing people to such an extent and making it not about ideas or movies, but making it personal. Because the way Hollywood Hollywood media talk about toxic fandom is in a personal way. A way that makes these fans seem both unhuman and more simple-minded than the rest. Which of course is just untrue, as all fandom is are a bunch of people that are passionate about the movie or franchise. I mean, every person on the planet is a fan of something, and so these people are just a fan of that particular movie or that particular franchise. That's not unhuman. That is literally the essence of being a human, as you can go out and find people that support a football team, or people that support a rugby team. Those people aren't inhuman, those people aren't toxic, they are literally just fans of something they enjoy. And so it's truly disgusting that the established entertainment media, which is meant to celebrate fandom, because that's the backbone of this industry, would end up causing something like this, and while I don't know for sure if it was knowingly, it's hard to see them not knowing that it can result in this type of extreme hatred, especially when they go on about it time and time.
time again and continue to vilify YouTubers who are literally just talking about movies. But what's insane is that Hollywood media will end up flipping once again and will no longer attack these quote-unquote toxic fans because recently Marvel fired all their activist producers and are looking to make it about the story again and about serving the fans. I do know people who work at Marvel, they have cleaned house. They um, quietly, months ago, fired all the producers that would could be labeled activist. Unlike, really? Yes, Kevin Feige recognizes. He, he even, uh, I'm not going to say exactly. Basically, he said that we tried it. It didn't work. He's talking about uh, phase four. So of course, now that the industry is looking at serving these toxic fans, media will just follow suit and start talking about Marvel fandom and how great everything is once again, as if they didn't spend the last four years calling us every istenphobe known to man. I mean, it's truly ridiculous, but we can all see that that's how the media is going to flip. So if they know that they're going to do that, they have to seriously question themselves about why they spent the last four years painting us out as the worst people on the planet. Because imagine if they succeeded and all the channels like Nerd Roddick and Critical Drinker were cancelled and had their voices silenced, then Marvel would have never had to listen and I would argue Marvel wouldn't be making the changes that they are reportedly making right now. And these channels are more important than they realise because they are literally the backbone of the industry because fandom is simply the backbone of the industry. I mean, to put it simply, if there are no fans, the movie doesn't make money. So franchises like Marvel and Star Wars are literally relying on these fans and making content for these fans, so why not respect them and treat them like damn humans? So to end the video, I just want to beg each and every one of you listening to not treat someone unhuman just because you disagree, but rather respect them as their own person and keep it about the ideas, perspective and opinions and not take it to a personal level and do not vilify them. Because at the end of the day, we are all movie fans, so let's keep it about the movie and not about anything else because clearly we can see the direction that this can lead to and I'm sure none of us want that to be the case, so let's not be the same as the Hollywood media. Let's keep it about the ideas, let's keep it about the perspective and don't take it to this kind of extreme because it's truly getting ridiculous how movie fans and critics are being attacked as if they are politicians because I mean seriously let's just make movies fun again and it's fine for fans to disagree on certain films and perspectives that's what makes fandom so awesome but let's allow the disagreement to start and end at the ideas and not go to any extreme places but all in all what are your opinions on this situation? Let me know down below in the comments. If you liked the video, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you all on my next video.